Good afternoon and welcome back to the workbench. Uh, so today I'm just in the process of assembling a board here. Um, and this in fact is the board that I made in the previous video where I demonstrated the use of the photoresist method for making printed circuit boards. Um, and as you can see this board has come along quite nicely. Um, I've drilled it, uh, I've tinned it and I've been adding some components just now. Um, and I'm up to the stage where I want to install my Atmega 32U4 on it. Um, and I'm doing that in a particular order because it's easier to solder some devices first depending on their physical location. Um, the decoupling capacitors that are quite close to the pins of the IC, um, I don't want to solder those in until I've installed the IC because it's just easier to do it that way. Um, the other components which are further out I've uh, already done. Um, but yeah, the others I'm going to have to do afterwards just makes it easier. Um, but before I install that, I just wanted to talk about the uh, chip itself, or rather the packaging it's in, and why it's in this particular packaging. So if you can hopefully see that uh, in focus there, you might be able to see this uh, tells you that this is a moisture sensitive device and uh, gives all these warnings about the uh, humidity levels and all sorts of stuff. Um, so that all looks kind of uh, impressive and possibly scary and confusing. <laughs> but basically, uh, it's quite simple. Um, at least uh, the the, the uh, concept is simple. The um, techniques of dealing with it are uh, potentially uh, not so simple, but uh, I'll get into that. <laughs> so basically, uh, this uh, IC in here is classified as moisture sensitive, and it's classified at level 3. You can see the big 3 written on the package there, um, top right. So, if you look on the little chart that's down the bottom, um, it says 3 is 168 hours. Um, and what that means, specifically, is once you take it out of the bag, it's viable for 168 hours. Um, now that doesn't mean that the chip is useless after that time. Um, what it means is that that's the maximum length it can be in a particular atmosphere, um, says factory ambient, 30 degrees C at 60% humidity. Um, that's the maximum amount of time it can be in that environment um, before it will become, to, I don't want to say wet, but um, it'll basically absorb moisture from the atmosphere over that time, and after 168 hours there'll be considered too much moisture absorbed into it for it to be safely reflowed um, in a high temperature uh, process like a reflow oven or uh, wave solder or something like that where there's a lot of uh, a lot of heat um, I mean throughout the entire board assembly throughout the entire package of the IC um, if you're just soldering the IC manually like on the leads directly with say drag soldering technique or something like that um, it's not too big of a deal because the amount of heat going in uh, won't really be a problem. But when it's in, say, an oven where the entire thing is being heated up at once, uh, then it can be an issue. Now the issue is that if the uh, device absorbs too much too much moisture, um, you get what's called, well, you can get what's called the popcorn effect. Um, and that's kind of what it sounds like. I mean, popcorn, you have a kernel of popcorn, um, contains some moisture. If you heat it up, relatively quickly with a high temperature, the moisture expands, the kernel explodes. That's how popcorn is made. Um, and a similar effect can actually happen with chips. Uh, <laughs> typically it's not as violent or impressive, but um, in extreme cases the package can crack uh, just like a popcorn kernel. It won't really explode and turn into a big puffy thing, but <laughs> you know the same principle is at uh, play there and the uh, thing can break that way. Um, but it doesn't have to be that impressive uh, to be broken. I mean, um, a little bit of moisture with enough heat can cause like delamination inside the uh, package, inside the die. It could break bond wires. It could make um, sort of hairline fractures in the, in the die or something. And, you know, you're not going to notice that at all. The chip is going to look perfectly fine on the outside. But it, does, it may be broken or have an intermittent connection or may just not last as long. Um, out in the field as it would normally. Uh, 
so yeah, it's uh, can cause failures and problems. So it is something to uh, watch out for. Um, so like I said, this is this uh, more applies to factory conditions. Um, generally, when you have a whole lot of devices, uh, you want to solder in a in a production run. Um, you just want to, don't want to have them sitting out of their packaging for too long uh, before you use them. Now, for hobbyist use, for example, um, like this one here, I'm going to solder on this board. Uh, I'm actually going to solder this by hand um, with a soldering iron, so you know it doesn't really matter. Um, like I said, not enough heat goes in to actually cause a problem uh, in general. Um, but if you were to do this in a reflow oven, and this had been sitting out, you know, if, if, if I'd opened this bag, this had been sitting on my table for, say, two months or something, um, and then I wanted to suddenly reflow it in, a, in an oven, or I wanted to use a hot air tool, um, or something that's going to heat the entire package very quickly, uh, I would have to uh, bake this at a low temperature for a certain amount of time to drive the moisture out and make sure it was dry again so that uh, when I did the soldering process it wouldn't get destroyed or potentially damaged or whatever. Um, and that's basically the uh, what this comes down to. So that's that's the, uh, the tricky part. Now with this it's a QFP so it has leads, I can solder it by hand, it doesn't really matter. This can sit out for as long as it likes and I'm not going to have a problem. If this was a, say, QFN with no leads and I have to use the hot air tool, um, then this actually becomes important and I have to make sure that, you know, I don't uh, buy this, for example, too long before I want to use it because it only will really uh, stay viable in this bag for, say, 12 months. Um, if I bought this, say, three years ago and then I tried to use hot air on it, I could have a problem. Um, and, I could, and again, if I took this out of the bag, left it around for more than 168 hours, then tried to use hot air, I could have an issue. So it's all just about the timing. It's all about what process you're using, um, whether or not you may have an issue. And of course, uh, things vary, everything varies. Um, you're going to get information for the particular device, particular package uh, from the manufacturer, if you want to get that. Um, maybe in the data sheet or with some other documentation. Uh, from the uh, manufacturer there, if you want to know specifics. Um, they'll probably give you like a guideline for how many hours and what temperature to bake it at if you needed to dry it out again. Um, everything's different, so... Uh, there's a... Yeah, like I said, a JEDEC standard here, J standard 033. Um, that gives you a list of sort of standard uh, baking procedures for general devices. Uh, but the manufacturer may have specific guidelines uh, for that. Um, in any case, yeah, it's just something to watch out for. So if you're a hobbyist, if you're building stuff by hand and soldering things with a soldering iron, and they have leads sticking out the side, uh, you shouldn't really have an issue um, in, in any case, really. Uh, if you're using a hot air tool, or if you've got a little reflow oven or something like that, um, you will have to take this into account. Uh, obviously, don't buy your devices too too early. Uh, don't have them sitting around for too long. Um, but in general, you know, if you're making a hobbyist thing, you're probably only going to make one off, or maybe just a few of something. So it shouldn't really be an issue. Um, I'd say the biggest uh, problem I would see would be for repair, maybe, um, or if you specifically if you're uh, trying to salvage other components from scrapped boards um, for example laptop repair or motherboard repair or, or TVs or something um, if there are some uh, service mount devices on those boards that you want to take off and reuse to fix another device um, maybe worth uh, going through the baking procedure for those boards before you actually take the devices off and try to reuse them um, because if you're removing them you most likely will be using hot air um, and if they've been you know obviously the thing has been in production it's been in use it's been outside in standard atmosphere for probably a long time and um, if you want to salvage parts off it they may be moisture sensitive um, you may get you may damage the part you're trying to salvage it's possible. Um, 
So you'd need to look up the data sheet for that device, see if it is moisture sensitive. If it is, um, then you know you may need to uh, bake that just to ensure that it actually still functions when you go to reuse it. Um, but yeah, in general though, I guess uh, for hobbyists it's probably not a huge deal. Um, but if you are taking things seriously and uh, want to make sure if you are producing a lot of lot of devices, you do need to take this sort of stuff into account. Um, there's a lot of stuff on the internet if you need to look this up, and you can find the uh, JEDIC standard uh, for this uh, on the internet, um, and have a look at all the documentation. Um, like I said, it gives lists of sort of recommended baking times and temperatures and and stuff like that. Um, if you do need to dry out uh, your parts, um, but yeah. That's how that works. Uh, so um, if you get if you buy something and it comes in a big bag like this and says moisture sensitive and looks all freaky, um, <laughs> don't worry too much about it. Uh, in in most cases, uh, especially if you use it um, within you know within the correct time of buying it, um, it shouldn't be a problem. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully it was useful. Um, I'll get on to soldering this on now and uh, finishing my board. So I'll uh, see you next time. Ah yes, one thing I forgot to mention, um, in addition to the silica gel inside the bag, which is obviously designed to soak up any moisture that gets in, um, you also get this little card here, which uh, indicates uh, whether or not the uh, humidity inside the bag has uh, crossed a certain threshold or not. Um, so this is kind of like the uh, moisture indicators, I guess, in a cell phone that tell people if they've had water damage or not. Um, and then you can see the uh, things will change colour from blue to pink depending on the uh, amount of humidity. And in fact, uh, it's quite interesting. We see here for level two parts, um, bake them if the 60% indicator is not blue. Well, it is still blue. So if this is a level two part, it wouldn't need to be baked. Um, but we go from level two A to five A. So this is a level three. So it'll be in this range. It says bake parts of 10% is not blue and 5% is pink. Now, the 10% is definitely not blue. Um, is the 5% pink? Well, I'm not entirely sure. Um, it's very vaguely pink. I, I'm assuming it would turn bright pink. Um, sort of like this is bright blue. Um, if it was a uh, problem, but... It's anyone's guess, really. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure uh, whether this is, is pink or not. Do they classify this as pink? I'm really not certain. Anyway, like I said, because I'm doing this uh, by hand, um, soldering, drag soldering around these pins, um, it's not really going to be an issue, even if this has uh, been subjected to too much humidity. But interesting uh, thing to note, because I only bought this, like I said, a couple of weeks ago.